गुड मॉर्निंग या हाय प्रत्युष सो या हाय प्रत्युष नितिन आई वाज सेइंग दैट यस्टरडे आई हैव सेंट टू अटैचमेंट टू यू सो नाउ प्लीज ओपन दिस वर्चुअल लैब डे 3 पीपीटी सो दैट वी विल बी डूइंग लैब्स साइड बाय साइड एंड यू कैन लुक इनटू दैट ओके यस सो नाउ लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद एक्सेस 1 so in exercise 1 if we see uh, we can uh, see how we can add sub communities and how we can create and add sub communities and we, how to create domains this is what exercise 1 consists of so coming to community in colibra it is a logical grouping of data assets and data elements that we have in colibra so like if i am opening this community we have multiple dom sub community and inside that community we will be having multiple domains so i if for example in real time if uh, like a organization having multiple countries as i already uh, quoted before so if i want to group all the data related to india in a common domain and in india there will be hr sales reporting domains so likewise for our requirement will be uh, having this logical grouping so that in each community if i click this community each community there will be a owner stakeholder business steward and technical steward assigned so that owner will be owning the data and business steward will be approving any kind of business term and business uh, glossaries or uh, kind of code set code value proposal all will be done by business steward and technical steward will also be there so that if any kind of add operations or any operation performing within the data in this domain the approval will be prompted to respective stakeholders and the business owners okay so for logically grouping our data set in a hierarchical manner we are having this community and as well as for assigning roles and responsibilities for this community this people is in charge and if there is some data quality issues or any kind of issue we can contact them if we want to request access and also we can contact the respective people i have started recording right yes, okay so likewise uh, we will be having and uh, yeah so so if uh, like if organization is having multiple database and data stored in cloud the, the technical people will be knowing where the data is stored and how the data transforms and all but uh, people like from the business side or uh, people from outside if we see this community so we will be log it is like a logical grouping only it is not actually present so we will be logically grouping and storing the data assets in respective places for making it more meaningful yeah so this is what community is now we shall see how to create a community and how to create sub communities in here so uh, uh, for creating a community i need to have a like uh, admin role so if i have a admin role here i can see uh, settings uh, in the drop down if i don't have admin role so the settings will not be there in settings i have special privileges for adding users for adding new complex relations as well as um like for assigning roles and responsibilities sir yes. can you record this session yeah i started recording fast recording yeah recording is on okay. yes yes okay. i have started recording okay like yeah but one request and then it please go a little slow because these things are new for us yeah yeah i will capture mm, yes okay i will one last question Mm-hmm. is this community same as your data domain or maybe a department yeah so if we want uh, if we want to hierarchically store our data metadata in yeah. uh, department wise we can have if i am i have to i need to have multiple committees one for hr one for sales and one for uh, employees i can have like that so if i want to group my data based upon countries geographical region i can also do that inside india there will be hr sales so is as per our wish we can have any hierarchical structure as per our wish so if you want to group based on geographical location we can do that if we want to uh, segregate based on department wise when we can segregate like that and then we can have the respective domains inside that okay okay, okay. so yeah so let me okay before starting uh, this and, let me uh, and, mm-hmm. yeah and nandini uh, so for owner uh, stakeholder or business to mm-hmm. words there can be multiple people uh, in the same role right i mean we yes. can tag multiple people right yes yes okay 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 if i so, am creating... uh, mm-hmm. yes, no uh, no go ahead yeah yeah you are asking something 
yeah so uh, so this uh, and uh, regarding this domain hmm. so you're saying like you know either it could be by uh, functional i mean either it could be a for by functional area or a uh, kind of subject area right i mm -hmm. mean that we can create yeah so community can be created via uh, functions like a uh, subject area as well as function area but domains so if we like domains are um, particular if we want to create a glossary if you want to have glossary in our particular community then we can have like domain types we can select but community and sub community regardless of uh, function or subject area it's as per our wish we can design and inside one community if i am having subject areas it will be more like a storage catalog and report catalog so that a domain type we need to select what we need to have in this side yes okay so community is per our wish yeah okay so yeah let me before uh, creating the sub community let me create let me show how the colibra dgc look so this is the colibra's landing page there will be a dashboard in this dashboard we can configure and if we want to have a dashboard we can do we can we will be seeing that so we will be configuring the dashboard and what are the things we need to include and exclude so we can create with the name and description so i have created the test dashboard okay likewise we can add whatever we want in a particular dashboard so there is already a steward dashboard in here so i think it is a default dashboard so here if i want to show for the steward what are the if i am a steward while opening the steward dashboard i will see my open task if any task is assigned to me in colibra and uh, what are the assets in various domains so in country glossary there is one asset and country codes there are five assets likewise for a steward he can see in here and also he can add some of the so i i think i don't have edit properties and edit widgets access in this lab so in this instant so yeah if i have uh, that i in the pre in the next uh, coming sessions i can show this out okay so here whatever i need to have sorry. i can keep as widgets yes no sorry to interrupt because you're talking about stewards i want to understand uh, can you do if you don't mind explain what, what is steward what does steward mean in polypa yeah okay so once i created a community i will be assigning a uh, certain uh, ownership and roles and responsibilities to particular technical people and business people so if i am creating this community i will be the owner if i am creating in my instance in my profile i will be the owner and if i am the owner i can assign the stakeholder administrator or someone so that uh, uh, whom like the registered users among the registered users i can assign to someone so that they will become the st uh, stakeholder and they will become the uh, business stewards and technical stewards so if yeah if i am starting a workflow inside the assets in this communities in this domain then the stewards and uh, respective technical stewards and stakeholder will be prompted for response like whether we can approve this whether we can make this uh, movement or not likewise so we will be creating roles and responsibilities for the people for this community that's what steward is so business steward and technical steward is responsible for the data quality maintenance and uh, they will be responsible for the data inside their domain like they will be accountable also they will be knowing what is there and they will be making decisions out of it so they will be the one who will making decisions out of the data in why this data governance tool okay this is what stewardship is okay uh, logically so we are grouping is, and assigning um, a role <laughs> okay so if you scroll to the right that is where because i didn't see technical steward so you were saying for every community you will have a business steward and a technical steward is yes. it those are the two yeah we Or can, you can if, add more yeah like this we in this view i'm updating so once i created a community i will add if i don't add also it's not a mistake but uh, mostly people will be having that otherwise the the grouping logical grouping itself will be meaningless and there will be no responsibilities on the data so once i created i will be the owner i can assign who will be the stakeholder for this community and this data who will be the business steward for this domain and who will be the technical steward and also if i assign the uh, stewardship the owner model in the community wise all the sub communities and domain will be inheriting the same 
like for the market uh, glossary also the same owner the same stakeholder would stake a uh, business holder okay okay so okay. basically business and technical stewards are at the community level higher level right now uh, uh, can they be separate at the sub committee level as well yeah we can if we want to if i don't want to create in here and if uh, for a particular domain if i want to assign i can do that also like particular sub community i can assign okay in say the okay. enterprise community yeah if i want to have multiple data stewards like for uh, jp1 and i am creating inside this customer success i am creating five different markets jp anz china america so for each one i can have this different business stewards so uh, we can have the stewardship in community and sub communities so that they will be responsible on that okay Ah, uh, Nandini, one question. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, so the the, the you are creating community and sub community mm -hmm. and adding uh, like mm -hmm. domains. Mm -hmm. So generally, who does this uh, activity? Steward or uh, admin? Generally, who does perform this activity? Actually, once the data governance tool is implemented, there will be a, a support team, DevOps team, or a support team for this Colibra tool. So the team will be ingesting mm -hmm. the communities, and the team will be having the sysadmin mm -hmm. role, and they will be owner. And based upon the business decision, business analyst and okay. the product owner, they will give the steward name, stakeholder name. They will be registering the users in Colibra, and then they will be assigned in here, so that the sysadmin will take care of it for this purpose and maintenance. Okay. Okay. So generally, they they are the admin people who generally hmm. assign all those roles. Yeah. All but the does Steward come into play and he see that if any community or a domain is missing stakeholder or owner, hmm. is Steward role is to inform the admin team that it's missing something like that? Yes. If there is any kind of issue, or they can report to the support team that is admin team. As well as they can mm -hmm. make a business decision, valuable business decision out of the data by seeing in here. There are lineage feature, quite data quality and privacy and risk. All the things are business term proposal. So completely, the Colibra tool will be leveraged by this business team only. The stakeholder is just for uh, getting aware, and they will be let they will be letting them know if there is a major decision taken. But everything mm -hmm. business steward and technical steward will manage. So business people will be using is, this. At most. Is is any of the role is mandatory to have? Not mandatory, but okay. if we okay. have, it will make it. Oh, yeah. Thanks. So okay. owner yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. Owner. It. Okay. Thanks. So owner will be defaultly assigned whomever is creating a community. They will be the owner for the particular community, and the stakeholder. It's not mandatory, but if we have those and if we maintain those, it will be very meaningful. Okay. Thank you. So and uh, Nandini, uh, yeah, uh, to add uh, just one question. Mm -hmm. So are all the so uh, uh, in this screen, right? Mm -hmm. So the activities that so is technical. Is there any uh, role for the technical stewards? I mean, as far as these contents are concerned, I mean, why I'm asking is that see, uh, technical stewards are uh, generally responsible for like you know uh, the data dictionary part, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, where yeah. basically we're doing mm -hmm. the data catalog i mean schema column and table related information mm -hmm. so i was just wondering uh, here basically we are creating like you know different uh, mm -hmm. uh, assets mm -hmm. like glossary and uh, so technical stewards uh, i mean are going to do anything in this in this screen i mean is there anything going to be assigned to them i mean can it be assigned to them yeah so mostly uh, technical stewards yeah as you said they are only responsible for the quality and the maintenance of the data assets so so in the screen uh, i think they don't have any uh, any activities but in this report catalog if i'm opening this if i'm having 10 to 15 assets and if some of the mandatory uh, feel, if only one asset is there and i am expecting to have multiple things in here and i can ask technical steward why this data is missing like technically they need to why okay. the source is interested yeah technically they will be okay. supporting yeah business people will be helpful in taking business okay. uh, decisions yeah Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Then let's continue. So yeah. let me go to the landing page again. So likewise, uh, dashboard is the la default landing page of Colibra. And in here, we can see the committees in here. So this is one committee and business analyst committee and data governance committee will, uh, will all will be there in, a, uh, in every DGC. And so in the business analyst committee, there'll be new data sets. We'll be looking what is data sets. 
and vice placed in business analyst committee and data governance committee yeah quality dimensions and data policies every every these kind of assets are logical assets they are not in uh, like uh, any physical data layer all the physical data layer assets will be stored in here like whichever is present in reality will be in here so these are logical groupings and logical mapping based uh, for our understanding yeah okay so this is one other community that uh, we they have created so in every DGC, there will be one community for physical data layer and there will be a business analyst committee and data governance council. So there will be business term and data assets that is related to business process. Okay. Nandini, so, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. but what's the business layer that you're seeing? Actually, actually uh, you're saying something like Yeah. So uh, I'm saying that uh, if a database is ingested into Colibra, so the columns mm -hmm. and tables are in reality, there is column and table in place. And that is what mm -hmm. we will be seeing in here. So if there is a database customer success and that will okay. be having this kind of schemas like we imagine. But uh, this business... So here we apply, and, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, here, here we import the actual data or just metadata? Metadata. So here we will be importing, we will okay. be like, for example, just imagine connecting a database. In a database, there will be okay. schemas and inside schemas, there will be tables and columns. And inside the tables, we will be having multiple rows mm -hmm. of data. So while ingesting, uh, yes. while I say ingesting a database inside Colibra, only the schema name, the table name and column name will be getting ingested in here. Okay. okay. So the data will not actually get ingested. Not it. So, perfect. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so while I'm searching into a particular table, I can see, okay, this table is in da this database. And if I want to see sample data, I can uh, see few, but not everything completely. Okay, so it is like a metadata. Okay, so this is physical thing that is actually in place in reality. And this business analyst committee and data governance council will be having certain terms and assets that we are having for our requirement. Like for the data sets, I need to... Uh, combine the data uh, HR data from all the geographical location in my organization say so I am having multiple geographical location in here so I'll be taking the operations data alone and I'll be creating a new data set it is a logical thing it is not actually in place for making data more meaningful and providing insights we are creating this data set likewise these are logical things okay this too business term, we'll be creating the business term for making it mean, meaningful. We'll be tagging it to the data assets present in physical data layer. Likewise, we'll be looking into this, how to propose business term and all. Okay, so if I click this Colibra icon, I will be again in my default landing page. So if I navigate it somewhere, I can click on there so that it will bring me back to the default landing page. It's still loading. Yeah, okay, so now if I click on browse, this uh, pane will be open and inside this, I can see the organization I, by, while having this also, I can navigate to the respective domains. From here, if I click, the respective page will be open and these are asset views. So if any kind of view configure, we can directly check on here. So we'll be seeing what is a view and how to configure a view. Let's, we'll be looking on that. So, and then this is the global search. So if I I'm, I will be knowing that uh, there is a table, there's a business term client or any kind of table. So for example, I will, uh, let's say in, in this community, in customer success do, uh, sub community, I'm having this domains. And inside do in the inside report catalog. So this is a, for example, we have added customer acquisition cost is a measure, asset type measure. So uh, I like if I I'm I will be uh, if I am get to know that uh, there is a customer life uh, customer acquisition cost that is a measure and I don't know in which community which sub community it is existing so I can directly use this global search and I can search for customer acquisition cost and here it is so I can click on this and it will be redirecting to the respective asset page so if I don't follow the suggestions mentioned in here 
and if I click that, if I'm clicking enter and I haven't clicked any kind of suggestion zone, it will be redirecting me this to the search page. So here, if we see the organization, I know that my customer acquisition cost is in this enterprise committee, I can click. So it will be filtered out only the assets inside that community. And also whether we can, we can see whether the asset type, if like, if this is okay, if I see search for customer, there will be multiple values. So there are business terms with this name, starting with this name and measures with this name. So I think I am searching for a measure. So I will be clicking on measure and filtering out for the respective asset type. And here it is likewise. So clear all it will be giving all the assets inside community. So there are data elements, columns, measures starting with this name. So if I click customer, if I search for customer, uh, the column searching uh, starting with customer will be and also if the customer uh, is present inside our name also like in between also it will be showing everything so that here like this we can search and we can find it out easily in k enterprise community also some assets starting with customer name and i want column so likewise if i click on that I'll be navigated to the next perspective assets page. So inside the IT operation, inside uh, this domain, this column is present. Okay, so this is how we'll be navigating. So then we have this global create button. So this will be used to creating, uh, this this will be showing suggest, suggestion on recent asset type. Okay, I think a Zoom will be ending at 40 minutes. So. In 8.40, our meeting will get over, I think. So once the meeting is ended, please rejoin again. Yeah, we'll be continuing. So it will be showing some suggestions. You can add a business term, table, column, data element, measures. So if I click assets, what are the assets we can add? I can add acronym, report, business term, KPI, likewise. And in organization, I can add a community. So business as a domains, code list, data as a domain. So by this global create button, I can add. So we'll be seeing how to add. And these are the tasks for mining, like the data basket. This is the data basket. If I want to access a particular set of data, uh, I'll be selecting this. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you please explain what are those assets and what those are replication costs? Uh, why are this meaningful of adding, like where we can add? Uh, yes, yes. Like what like, kind of activities that does? Like, can you uh, explain this? Yeah, while doing the hands-on, you'll be knowing that. So I want to show you this okay. icons first so that we will be uh, there, like we'll be uh, uh, okay. comfortable Fine. in this platform. Okay. So yeah, likewise, sure. this is the date. Okay, thanks. So in this data basket, we will be for selecting particular data set and for shopping the like, if we can select a particular data set and we can, here there will be option proceed to check out in, other, in uh, the next lab so that we can check out this data and we can have access for this data set likewise. So this is the data basket and task. If I click on the task, what are the tasks assigned to me? If I'm a data steward for approving rejection, multiple tasks will be assigned and it will be popping up in here. All tasks, my task and OD task. So these are the activities. If I'm performing any import, any ingestions, so how it will be taking some time, two to three hours running in background. So I can monitor the process by clicking on show more. So in this activities, I can see the results, why it is failed, how it is completed likewise. Okay. So, and then, and then, okay. Let me uh, one, and then one question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So in order to have, in order to have uh, access to the uh, right. data set. Okay. That's right. You need, uh, I mean, you need like, you know, permission from the respective uh, owners. Yes. I mean, unless they provide, I mean, you won't be able to access it, right? Yes, I yes. Mean... Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I will be asking you all a question. So if I'm not having an access to see the, if I, whatever I'm having access, I can see in this browse pane. So, so I have access for this community. So I'm seeing this. So how can I raise access for the community, which I not sure whether it exists or not? 
So if I have access, I can, it will be listing in my page. So if I want to raise access to the committee, which I don't have access before, so how will be doing? Somewhere we need to get to know that this community is there, we can raise access, right? So that can be done in this data catalog page. So here if we see the data sets and all the data sets, irrespective of we have access or not, it will be listed in here, data sources and data sets. So likewise, we'll be raising the access for the things we don't have access ever before, okay? So I can select this data sets and I can shop for data, add to this data basket. So we'll be looking onto that in a lab. Okay. okay. I'll, hmm. okay. Does this show the community name anywhere? Um, yeah, we can see. So in the next lab, the data sets uh, will be more clear. I will show that. So I think here the data sets are like, they, they haven't yet grouped into a data set. The data sets are in single. Okay. So okay. once, uh, yeah, in, so if we uh, look, uh, click on the data sets, we will be getting to know the community and domain details. Okay. Yes. So in this question mark will be product documentation, uh, university marketplace logger support ticket. If I'm experiencing any kind of issue in the Colibra platform, if something refresh, uh, which is happening till yesterday, it's not happening today, I can log a support ticket. If I want to ask any doubts, regarding the product, uh, how to do this, how to integrate this. We can log a support ticket and inside the support ticket, we can give our details, our query, and then we can submit so that they will be coming back to us via the mail ID we have registered in this platform. Okay, so Colibra University and Marketplace is also there, product documentation. So if I want to check in some of the documentation about the things, I can also use that. And this is my profile. And if I click this uh, nine dots, it will be uh, shown this. So business glossary, catalog, assessments, policy manager, reference data, global view, data help grid, and stewardship. So each thing I can navigate. So if I'm clicking on business glossary, all the business glossaries across this platform will be listed in here. And I can see, so these are the clients, business term are there in the business glossary. So these are the business term in our DGC. So there are 151 business term yet so far. So in the business glossary, we'll be having all the business term. And if I want to check when further the business term, and I want to check how the business term is related to data set, I need to dig in further. Likewise, we can have, so like these are the three views. We will be seeing how to configure the views, how to have the set of columns. We want the attributes in the site pane and how to configure the views. So as per our wish, we can, configure the view and in this view approved asset they will be they will be only having the assets which have been access in accepted status likewise so while looking on the views we can see how they are configuring multiple views and how they are filtering out for their required columns in okay so this is metrics and glossaries this metrics if you are actively using so we can see yeah how much data assets so now and inside this data set how much business terms are there in orange color and how much business terms are accepted by the steward in blue color likewise there will be graphical representation in here so there are in march 14 there are uh, 16 844 assets registered and only 147 approved likewise so these are the metrics for the business asset so this is for business term and this is for business asset. There are 21,000 March 10, this 20,000 plus assets are registered and only 1,200 have been approved. So yeah, so they can business to us and look into why they are not been approved or we can reject them. So we can check in further. So these are the all glossaries across our DGC, all kind of business glossaries. I can see in this tab. So coming next to catalog. So in this catalog, we can see the data sets. So here it is, yeah. The, for the data sets, I don't have access. It will also be listed in here across other communities. If I'm having access only for Indian data, ANZ data, China, like those data will be in this data set and I can shop for it. 
So the recently viewed. Here also I can search for a data set catalog. So these are the data sources I have. So in this catalog home, I can see the data sets and data sources. Like if I want to know about the data, details of the assets we have in Colibra, I can check in here. So there's no store data source yet for so far. For this library, uh, like uh, for this lab, we'll be just high importing the file. So there is no registered data source. Likewise, we can see and reports. If we have any reports in our platform, it will be listed in here. Power BI reports or Tableau reports ingested and the data sets here and data sources. There are no data sources yet registered. And data dictionary is nothing but if we are uh, having like a PostgreSQL ingestion, the assets will be in a data dictionary, physical data dictionary. So that will be data asset or data element. So that will be listed in all kind of data assets in Colibra that we have access for. And these are the physical assets that's actually in there in reality and technology assets. We can so see. Nandini, one question. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we are not importing data from SQL, it doesn't mean that we don't have data dictionary? Um, so if we will be having, we can check the supported uh, data source integration for Colibra. It is uh, it will be supporting the XML, JDBC versions, okay. and yeah, Cloud Raha, mm -hmm. big data versions. So yeah, everything uh, other than SQL, oh, if, yeah. you are, uh, if you are uh, uh, like formally ingesting from a source, it will be okay. Let's see. So once completing this, let's see uh, what is the difference between business glossary and data dictionary. Okay. So yeah. Technology assets will be having the uh, uh, technology assets such as system storage catalog S3 file system. These are the technology assets. It will be shown in this pane. All the technology assets in our Colibra DGC. So metrics. So like business asset metrics for the data assets and technology asset, how much assets have been registered and how much has been in status accepted. It will be shown in uh, orange color so that the people might know so this much of uh, data is there but only this much of trustworthy data is in in our dgc so that they can plan accordingly so they can see uh, in which domain the data count is large and likewise so technology assets also the same for functionality how much has been registered and how much has been and, uh, Nandi, who, who approves this uh, asset approves yeah usually while yeah for data assets then my data asset and technology asset then might not be much approval needed while registering a entire source okay. if i'm having a huge data it will be ingested directly but as we as the business mm -hmm. terms and business definitions and uh, code set code values acronyms and uh, policies these kind of assets have been defined by the business analyst team like or the business uh, users will be defining that mm -hmm. for the logically segregation so that will be needing an approval mm -hmm. yeah so if a if a team uh, business team is having one business analyst and 10 it users in their team if the it users is having some insights and if they are uh, doing some logical grouping such and adding policies and adding business term then business analyst need to approve the business analyst will be the business steward in colibra got it so this is actually in place. So they, uh, this okay. are physical data. So this might not be getting approval, but the logical groupings, whichever we are, we are creating that. So that will be having an approval process. Okay. Yes. Okay. So access request. So, uh, so Nandini, uh, yeah, Nandini. Yeah. Just to, uh, extend that uh, question. So basically, so, uh, so, so this whole mechanism like you know like uh, when uh, let's say business uh, uh, steward like you know initiate an approval process so the whole approval process is managed through the work yes flow right yes okay so so unless let's say uh, business steward like you know gets a final confirmation hmm. that particular let's say business term won't be approved yes 
it will be in okay. the review under review state itself if a particular asset is in yeah. under review that is not trustworthy yeah okay so will be in the approval okay. part so uh, once once mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no no go ahead yeah. yeah so while doing the workflows we'll be looking into that so once if the workflow mm -hmm. is enabled then i while i'm proposing a business term like i'm creating a business term from the global create button and there a specific community it will be uh, in mm -hmm. the business asset page it will be under review and uh, there will be an, an option for starting the workflow start workflow simple across workflow while i'm clicking okay. on that then it will okay. be prompting a response from the respective stakeholders whether i to approve or not they will be tasked with uh, mm -hmm. approving or rejecting mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. okay and once it is like you know approved or uh, certified like you know then like you know that uh, uh, asset like you know is uh, safe to use correct yeah that is trustworthy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one more question. So, is the so is that the only purpose of the workflow? I mean, just to uh, ask, so, or is there any other utility of the workflow yeah. apart from like you know this uh, this approval process and all? Hmm. So, yeah, some kind of advanced customized workflow is there for importing certain terms for connecting external sources and doing some imports, and and this workflow. Mm -hmm for yeah the main purpose of workflow is to automate the task whichever is happening inside colibra like automate for uh, for avoiding time waste and manual interventions this workflow are designed for it will be prompting response from the right people at the right time so other than this inside colibra we can connect uh, using workflow through the external dgc if i start a workflow then it will be starting import and also for certain functionalities for example i will be i let me say you a use case so if i'm having a 10 different uh, uh, 10 different registered data sources so weekly i will be refreshing that uh, data from the data sources so that if there is any change in the data from the source i can have it in colibra so that uh, this is a operational task so if i'm experiencing mm -hmm. uh, a while refreshing the data there will be sometimes an issue uh, naming refresh conflicts it's a predefined issue in colibra so if there is any kind of new asset uh, the issue will be there and the refresh will be stopped so i can create a workflow mm -hmm. for uh, if there is any refresh conflicts do this do that and re-ingest re-import start the trigger again likewise so it's a very advanced one and uh, okay. we'll be using a groovy script for that so yeah Mm -hmm. Likewise, we can uh, or to perform the operations inside the Colibra, like proposing the assets and working with the assets and working with the, like collaborating with the people in Colibra, like users, technical stewards, as well as we can connect other external sources and we can manage the data from their source into Colibra, likewise for importing and doing certain operation from the external source also we can perform, but it's a too much complex, like a creating a groovy script yeah. we need to know so usually mm -hmm. while creating a workflow we will be having out of the box workflows and out of the box asset types and relation so out mm -hmm. of the box means which uh, colibra has defined so this asset type business asset data asset everything is defined by colibra likewise we'll be having out of the box mm -hmm. workflows so sir so like approval process request access and proposing a new business term yeah. simple approval so this kind of workflows we have by Colibra. So if want to, if we want to customize according to our needs, we can go ahead and using Groovy we can do. And also if we stuck somewhere, we need to make big things. We can have a coaching session with the Colibra team regarding the workflow. They will be guiding us. Okay. So yeah, like it was a bit okay. uh, complex. Yeah, but there will be there. They will be mm -hmm. supporting and guiding us. What we can done, we can have. So for the coaching session, we will be paying certain amount for them for one hour session and they will be guiding us. Yeah. Okay. 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 Fine. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So access request, I don't have raised access for any kind of data sets. It will be displayed in here and advanced data types. If there is any advanced data types in my data, it will be shown here. While ingesting if it detects any advanced data types since in the physical data dictionary it will be showing in here okay so next assessments if we are performing any kind of assessment in the data sets it will be shown in here if you want to uh, conduct assessment for a particular data set i can add assignee so uh, john take care of this data set and you will assess you will have some 
policies or certain rules and you can validate and you can approve whether the data set is in good quality or not like this kind of assessment can be conducted in the data sets and it will be listed in here and we have policy manager for the governance asset the policy assets so as of now we don't have any policy assets such as uh, we'll be having asset type policy so if we have those kind of assets governance assets we'll be having in here and the metrics for the governance assets like how much assets have been there how much has been approved likewise now it is in zero but in march 17 it, there are 25 governance assets in there like the policies everything will be there and we have reference data so reference data as the name says uh, it will be used for reference like code value uh, if for for we can take this example so for this australia i am having the code value au and i can tag all the assets related to australia with this code name so while a people checking this uh, asset is having this code value then they can understand okay this asset belongs to australia okay it's related to belgium likewise this is for reference only just reference so these are the code values and the metrics for the assets, code values and code sets. And the hierarchy. If there is multiple code values, code sets and code list, it will be in here. Inside code list, there will be code set and code value. So this is the code set. I think I need to let me check it is filtered only for code value yeah only code values there let's see how the code set looks like yeah so these are the reference data used for reference purpose global view Okay, now I will be audible, I think. Someone is waiting in the lobby. Everyone is there. Right? No, I think we lost so, it. My question was, uh, the okay. code value is the only kind of asset in the reference data, or we have another assets in reference data? Um, yeah, code value and code is the only asset we have in here okay. in reference data. Yeah. So acronyms, everything will be in business terms, like it is a kind of business asset. Mm -hmm. Internet is a bit unstable for me. Okay. So I think we're not able to hear you continuously. Is it just me or are others also facing the issue? Uh, same here, right? We are having okay. interruption. Last okay. Minutes, I hmm. Now it's fine, right? Yeah. I switch my network now. It will be fine. It's okay, it's good now. Okay. So yeah, in reference data, we'll be having code sets, code values, and code list. I'm clicking on the global view. It's still loading. So in the data help desk, I will be having if any, I'm like someone said, if the data is not there, what, how, who will be responsible? Someone asked, right? Likewise, if I'm uh, finding the data is incorrect or insufficient or it is not refreshed for a long time, I can raise the issue and the issue assets will be displayed in data help desk. And in the global view,
I can see all the assets across my entire DGC. Asset type maybe it's a business quality dimension, issue category, these are the asset types, business term, code value, acronyms, and yeah. All the assets can be seen under global view. And stewardship. So in stewardship, who uh, are assigned for which responsibilities I can check in here. For this enterprise community, the owner is, like if I assign it to John and I'm uh, assigning a stakeholder as some other person, it will be displayed in there. All the communities and whom are the owners and who is the stakeholders, who is the business steward. And I can also edit fields for technical steward, also community manager. So this kind of roles are there. So chief data owner is there, community manager, data analyst, and data category, who is the data custodian. So I can update and save so that I can see the entire stewardship across my organization. So who is the chief data owner for this community? And yeah, so then comes the other domains inside the community. So who is the, for the business analyst community? So for the schema, who is the owner? For this new data set, who is the owner? Like. I can see the entire stewardship and I can contact the respective person for the respective data if I want. Other than access for other any issues, I can see in here. Like it is like a home page. So we can see if we click on the data custodians, we can see the members as a, in that particular group. So if I have three data custodians in my organization, then their first name, last name, email name. Everything will be in here. Likewise, the stewardship, how we have organized our stewardship will be visible. So, Nani, what, what, what will be there in responsibility thing? I can go to add... stewardship. Okay. Yeah, in responsibilities, what are the schemas they have been owning? So, for this schema, for the business analyst community, okay. new data sets is their responsibility. Okay, likewise. Hmm. Okay, then, yeah, so we have looked into. So now let's see what is the may, what is the reason for having business analyst and data governance council. So what is the difference between this uh, business terms and data assets? So data asset is the thing which we have in reality in our organization. For example, uh, if I'm having an Excel file which uh, has the employee's date of birth, so it is a real world entity. So I can inject that Excel into here, this Colibra, inside my community. So that is what physical data layer is. It is actually in place. So I'm ingesting that so that I can view the metadata, the column names and all from here. So once the employee's uh, date of birth is ingested, I'll be having proposing a new business term date of birth of an employee, Indian employee. That is the business term I will propose. And once that term gets approved, I will tag it to this Excel file I have ingested, the data assets from the file. I'm ingesting in IT operations. So there will be the data assets related to date of birth table and column. So I will be tagging this business term with that data asset. Yeah, this happened on day one. On day 10, there are multiple, like I'm ingesting some other sources and in that sources also I'm having some kind of date of birth value and also I'm tagging to that uh, source I have ingested later with the business term. So while, create, uh, while clicking on a particular business term, I can see whatever data is related to that. What are the assets, data assets related to that business term? So here there's no business term. So while we ingest in, in new business term, we can check. So what are the data sets related to this business term and it will make more meaningful. So sometimes the column name will be date of birth and some in some uh, tables it will be DOB and in some tables it will be birth alone. So while I am knowing that this all the columns related to date of birth, I will be tagging it to in here so that the people from the business side and the IT users can get to know, okay, this data is for uh, get uh, this data deals with the employees data of birth like that okay this is the use case this is the difference between business term and the physical data layer assets okay 
I think Abina was that. No, I was asking in the data dictionary and glossary. Yeah, the inside data dictionary there will be data assets, data elements, and tables, fields. So inside business glossary there will be business assets. Okay. Okay. Basically, terms. Huh, yeah, business terms. In data. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that is the logical group. And uh, Nandini, so yeah, so uh, under this new business terms, right? Under the mm -hmm. Data Governance Council mm -hmm. uh, community. Mm -hmm. So how do you create, like, you know, let's say on an incremental basis, like, okay. you know, you get to know, like, the example you gave, right? Mm -hmm. DOB or date of birth, customer mm -hmm. birth date or mm -hmm. whatever. So how? Okay. So is it like you know, a manual activity? Yes, yes, yes. It's like uh, time yeah. to time, like you know, you go check yeah. and update. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can update the existing asset. If I'm having an asset date of birth already in my data, like in my DGC, I can update it with the latest updates. I can change the name. And also, if I want to add a business term newly, each time I can just uh, use this global create icon for creating a business term. Otherwise, I can import it in bulk. If I'm having access file with thousands of business terms, I can import it. We can see how we'll be importing that uh, data assets and business terms. Mm -hmm. And also once uh, that is there, we can delete it if I have admin access. And also if I'm the owner, I can delete it. I can update it. I can update the attributes. I can change the no, owner. No. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 that part I got. So basically what my question was like, can you go back to the that uh, home page? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so under the uh, root community that you have, okay. Mm -hmm. So we have, let's say like, you know, so we have created like, you know, this, uh, uh, a glossary domain where like you know we would be keeping like you know all our uh, mm. business terms right mm. so my question was that let's say uh, so here in this business term like you know we may be having like you know a lot of information about let's okay. say uh, related to birth date okay mm. now the second part is like you know while let's say creating or like you know putting the information under this date Data governance council that you created right so there is a new business term uh right. section can you yeah can you just yeah so so yeah. how like you know we would be maintaining let's say date of birth related information yeah. under this new business terms folder so is it going to be a manual activity one by one or or uh, let's say on incremental basis like you know we are updating our glossaries okay mm -hmm. so like what you said by importing uh, or making changes, uh, mm -hmm. there could be some additional uh, content related to date of birth. So is it like, you know, time to time? So this place is fine under the marketing glossary because anyway, like, you know, we would be knowing. Mm -hmm. But what about the new business term section folder? So here, how we would be maintaining? So is that going to be completely manual? Uh, like time to time, we have to check uh, what is there in the marketing glossary and take that information and update it here like you are asking the link between new business terms and uh, yeah 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 okay so if i want to make my business term available to across all the communities i can keep it in here and i can tag it from here if mm -hmm. uh, if the business term is domain specific it is only for the uh, first community this enterprise root community then i can have a sub glossary mm -hmm. in their domain and i can keep it in there Mostly it will be like community specific. Other people will be tagging like that. If I want to uh, tag it across the entire community, I can keep it in this data governance council, new business terms and all. And also it will be a manual map activity. Time to time we need to check. If we need to check, we need, can change from this page. Mm -hmm. And who is and who is responsible for this uh, this thing, this new business or so this page? So yeah. For proposing a new business term and for adding the uh, business term inside Colibra, business IT users can do that. For approving, we will be uh, it will be prompted to the uh, uh, business towards. Okay, it is basically activity of business analyst community only. So the IT people, support people, will not be checking on that. So we'll be getting uh, files from the business team and we'll be working on that. If they are no, uh, they okay. don't need to add and all. Okay, so the entirely meeting this business terms, business glossaries, it's everything is for business analyst community. Those people from business side. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now uh, I think it's time nine three. Let's carry on till nine thirty. Okay. Now it's uh, yeah. This is 
we have gone through the page. Now let's start with exercise one. I will be opening the PPT. Okay, I have opened in my mobile. So in the exercise one, we will be seeing how to create subcommunities and domains. Creating procedure for community and subcommunity is same, but I don't have access, access admin access for creating a community. So that inside this community, I will start creating my own subcommunities. So we have this global create button. I'm once navigating into this community, I can click on this global create button. And I can so, so these are the assets I can add into this folder. And in organization, I can see the communities and domains that I can add. So now I'm going to create subcommunity. So I'm clicking on community. So which will be my parent committee? So this will be my parent committee. Enterprise, it's already in default. So this is my parent committee. Inside this uh, enterprise committee, I'm going to create subcommunities. Okay. So let me have a number. Um, as the date is 24, let's have 24. The name should be unique. Customer success. And I'm clicking on enter. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, Nandini, a quick question. Uh, I have seen that registered data somewhere in, in the part. Yes. Of uh, Colibra. Is there the committee current registering data or it's a different one? Uh, register data source right uh, for registering a mm -hmm. new data source if yeah so you are asking what is your question is the community yeah yeah, yeah. that's what that's what registering uh, a new data source the committee that you are mentioning right so this is what the data glossary part right uh, okay so how it will be related to this or, uh, click on that okay just i will one minute yeah yeah operation Okay, I'm getting the subcommunities. So now the committee. Uh, no, the subcommittee activity now, what we are doing, uh, no, okay, okay, the access, what we are currently doing is yes, now yes, we yes. are creating. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming to okay. you. Okay. So, yeah, just I started. That's why I created. Okay, now uh, once, uh, yeah, register catalog. So, here data source into this data source. I If I click Plus, I can see register system and register data source. Uh, mm, yeah. Okay, so no, no, the exercise now what we are doing, right? Like mm -hmm. creating the committee and all. Mm -hmm. So, in which particular section this is coming up? Whether we are doing a catalog thing or a business uh, glossary? It's a uh, What is the activity now? Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, we are uh, in the first lab. Okay. In that first page, you'll be having getting started, right? So, these are the basic things. So how will we'll be creating community? No, no, no. What, what is the first thing? Sorry, uh, because uh, there is a breakage in your voice. What is the first okay. thing that we are creating? Yeah, I have sent you a PPT, right? In that virtual lab, uh, there is a getting started uh -huh. below the virtual tab, first topic. So this is the getting uh -huh. started part. So okay. in the getting started, we'll be seeing how to create views, create domains, dictionaries, assets, likewise. Okay. So this is the first part actually getting started. Okay. Basically, the Basically. organizational hierarchy is the uh, part that we are creating. Um, uh, because I was not, I was unclear on what is the committee. I mean, like, okay. are we creating some sections? Say, for example, uh, IT. Uh, there are multiple departments in the mm. company. Are we creating and segregating and creating a hierarchy, or what is the activity? And, okay. So yes. So yeah. If, for example, if I want to segregate my assets based upon the geographical locations, I will be inside my enterprise community, uh, any kind of root community. I want to segregate my physical data assets inside uh, like India, Africa, China, Japan, oh, and I will be yeah. creating subcommunities. And inside subcommunities, mm -hmm. I can ingest the data related to India. It's like a logical representation according to our wish. 
how we can segregate, we can segregate. For classifying the data and having a hierarchy across like a one common so, across so the this, this all this part is coming under business glossary and cat data cataloging. So that is the initial activity we are doing. Um yeah, it is a it is come like it is a data cataloging activity only. Okay, okay, yeah, great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes. So okay. Inside okay. Now we have created this uh customer success and IT operations and manufacturing experience. You are breaking up, Nandini. Can't hear you. Okay. Now the meeting will be ending in 10 minutes again. Um, I think I am switching. Okay. Now let me hear. Let me be a little louder. Okay. Now is it fine? Yes. Okay. So, yes. Let me create the third one, manufacturing. And if the name is unique, I can, I will be seeing this create icon. Once I click the create icon, it will be created. So we have created the customer success, customer IT operation and manufacturing domain. And uh, we can see in the exercise one, that slide, second slide in that virtual lab PPT, Everyone, please open that uh, PPT so that we'll be going in hand in hand. And we can see inside customer success subcommittee, we'll be creating domain type glossary and a domain type report catalog. So inside this customer success committee, now I will be creating a domain. So just I'm navigating into the respective subcommittee and I'm clicking. Glossary. So inside organization, I'll be having glossary. So I'm going to create a domain with a domain type glossary and the name will be marketing glossary. And yeah, I will create. So if I want to create multiple domains, I can create in one go. Yeah, so that's the, it is created. And then I'm going to create a report catalog domain. So I will be searching for report. Okay. And domain, which will be my parent domain. I can search in here. So I can create uh, assets in some other domain, some other community as well. So I'm having it under 24 customer success now. So this will be my parent domain. Why it's not showing? Let me create it again. So report catalog, I'm creating it under 24 customer success and name will be customer success reporting. Okay. So now, yeah. So inside this 24 customer success subcommittee, this is the parent community, this is sub community, and I have created two domains inside this. So in in each community, there are, the name should be unique. The same marketing glossary might be available in some other sub communities, but inside one sub committee, the name should be unique. It will be identified like uniquely by this parent domain or parent community. So yeah, so the name should be unique inside any sub communities or community. And yeah, going so now we have created sub communities and domains. Moving on to access two we will be creating business term in the marketing glossary. So business glossary will be having business term. So I'm going navigating to this marketing glossary and I will be uh, creating four business term here. If I click 
plus it will be showing that suggestions acronym and business term usually will be residing inside business glossary so it is showing suggestion and yeah business term i'm clicking inside market glossary i'll be creating marketing expense and i will be pressing an enter so much so this business for the system i'm creating inside in here and we'll be creating an acronym ca great and and in the customer success subcommittee we'll be creating a measure so reports will be having usually reports will be having measures and kpis so let's move on into that report catalog i'll be creating measure customer acquisition cost So now I have created a measure. So once creating this, I can tag it to the data assets in the physical data layer that uh, we have ingested and kept in physical data dictionary or data domains, other data domains. So yeah, now we have completed the access to, we can, we are seeing how to add data assets or business assets or any kind of measures inside the respective community or domain. Okay, so yeah. So remaining meeting time is three, 50. so guys please rejoin we can have for 10 minutes like, like we can have the class until 9 30. Okay. so now we will be seeing how to add relations and definitions among the data assets or business assets so we will be adding a definition for the client business term. Yeah, let's go back to this business term and how to add a definition for that, for making it more meaningful and understandable. So for the client business term, which is in marketing glossary, I'll be opening that page. From directly here, I can add the definition that one or more goods or services during this fiscal year, like, let me do it a little bit fast as I have too much. Like, so the client who who bought goods or services in this fiscal year, like the definition which give more meaning to this business term, I can add in save in here. So inside market business glossary, once this definition is saved in the asset page, I can see it in here too. So I can select the fields definition, which I just now added. I'm saving that. So whatever definition I had, it's just visible in here. I can edit it directly from this page too. So if I found, likewise, I can add in here or otherwise in the asset page, I can add everything for that particular asset. So this is done. And now we are going to navigate to the customer acquired business term and we'll be creating an acronym relation. So this customer acquired business term has a relation with this acronym. Let's do that. I'm moving to this customer acquired asset page. For this, I will be navigating to here. So add characteristics. And I can we can add attributes. Attributes is nothing but a node description which gives more meaning to the data asset and relations. How it is related to business term or any kind of code value, any technology asset. 
so by this relation we can tag it to those assets in some other committee yeah so in relation i am going to re relate this customer acquired business term with the acronym ca so i am searching for has acronym this relation so this business term has acronym ca if i search i can see multiple CAs in here, but the 24 customer success is the one we have created. This is across other domains, other communities. So I will be clicking on this and I will be saving. So once saved, I can see this business term has acronym CA. Likewise, we will be adding the relations with the other data assets inside this Colibra DGC. Okay, now.